the Coach Tyler Show. Hi, welcome to another episode of the Coach Kyle Show. By now, you should be familiar. Um, this is this is our third week um, doing this live show. Remember, this show is all about soccer um, on the field, off the field. Like I said, <clears throat> we are really in ears. You know, we speak to we speak true to power. Um, we speak um, in the present. We, you know, we try to keep it as real as possible. Um, obviously, you're with your host, uh, Coyote McKinnon. And alongside me, the wingman is back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the greater wall of med. And it's no different tonight. You know, we, we're going to uh, bring a topic that um, seems to yeah. you know, have a lot of controversy around it. But this is not our goal tonight. <laughs> Our goal tonight is about liberation, is about um, taking responsibility. What you say to that? <laughs> it is. It is about taking responsibility. But I know this one is, like you said, we talked about it. And this one is going to, like you said, is going to hit a lot of people. Yeah. And, and we want we want that, though. I mean, we talked about it all the time. To, to, to have change, we got to have a conversation. We got to be able to, you you know? gotta be able to speak. You got to be able to speak. Um, you you have the authority to speak. You 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 have the mouth. You have the heart. You have the the eyes, the hands, the nose. Um, you're not an alien, so that gives you <laughs> that gives you the responsibility to speak. Um, it's not about it's not about making everybody comfortable. And that, I remember we did a show a couple months ago, not trying to be all things to all people. Yeah. So it's important <laughs> that you know. You don't you don't get blindsided by you know what people like or what they don't like, but the important thing is is staying true um, exactly. to yourself. In even if it's good, bad, and indifferent, um, stay true to yourself. But nevertheless, we want to discuss the um, the why there's no diversity, why there's not enough diversity within soccer, or uh, as you you can see on the screen, the lack of diversity in soccer. We're going to touch a bit on, on, on what that is and on what that really means because, you know, it's a whole lot of fallacy out there. Um, there's a whole lot of, there's a whole lot of bait into, um, there's, there's a whole lot of misconceptions, misconceptions, um, to be real. Um, we, we want to tackle it and we will, we will try to be as objective uh, as we can because we don't want to be, um, we don't want to be on this show with a whole lot of opinions, you know. We don't really deal with opinions because most know. people that most people that got an opinion, they got an agenda too. So we're gonna try to stay uh, as factual as possible and, and let the, the chips fall um where they may. Um diversity, lack of diversity in soccer, you know. What what does that mean to you? What does that mean to you all? There's no diversity in soccer. Let's, let's, let's keep it 100. There's no diversity. Let's be, let's be specific. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. about okay. lack of diversity in soccer when it relates to coaching. Okay. When it relates okay. to coaching. Because obviously there's, there's, there's diversity as they, you obviously know, play, how, yeah. how, how, they de how they define diversity. There is diversity because you got players of different race, different culture, um, they, they're different religion. Um, stuff like that. So yeah. we speaking directly to, to coaching because coaching has to do with leadership, um, yeah. the ability to move people from where they are to where they need to be through, inspir through inspiring them, um, through your passion, through your, through your integrity, through your discipline. Um, so we, we speaking directly to that. By my experience, <clears throat> I remember, I think we had the conversation about, um, Type of coaches I had playing in this country because I had the experience of playing for for different academies, and a coach that looked like myself has never came upon. You know, I had a Latino coaches, and I think that's a coach that I had a good relationship with because again, he had the experience, he played professional, and I had I did not see nobody that 
to be honest, that look like me or came from a background like me, even though 90% of the players looked like me. Yeah. They looked like me until I had to go back home and I had the conversation with you. Like, I experienced that. I had mm-hmm. to be in my country to experience that. But in America, I've never experienced it. Culturally, though, <clears throat> how how difficult um, yes, how difficult is that? Looking looking back now and, and having such a stellar career, played in Ghana, played you know Red Bulls here, played at top colleges, played ODP, all of these things, and and not having um, some somebody that could actually relate to your culture. Um, thinking about that now, how how you felt like that play a role in 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 how you perform and what you could have even done much better in yeah. had it been somebody who truly understand your culture, understand your background, and not just dealing with you uh, as, as a player, as a disciplinarian, or dealing with you as, you know, I want the best for you. It, it, <laughs> it, I didn't really understand it, to be honest, until I went back home. Because, like I said, every time I was here, they, they saw a player that was fast. I was, I was good at dribbling. They saw that. So, again, they looked at it as, okay, we're just trying to win. They didn't really truly understand the culture that I came from. Mm-hmm. Like I said, until I went back home, I I really understood what it is to be a Ghanaian, what it is to play for a certain culture that played a certain way. Mm-hmm. There's a certain mm-hmm. mentality. There's a certain way you're supposed to train, what you're supposed to eat. I did not understand it until I went back home. And it took me a couple of years to really adjust to, to the culture. And I, I'm born. I was born there. I came there. I came to here when I was very young. So just to not have that and somebody I couldn't relate to except my family. Yeah. I, I, I missed a lot. Let's be a Frank. I, I lost a lot of years of development. Think about, think about how far you could have gone oh, um, in your career, having, you know, having somebody who truly understand and pushing you in that direction. I don't think people miss it a lot. Um, and they feel like, you know, it's, it's not that important, <laughs> but it is, you know, think about living, <laughs> think about living with your parents and then living with someone who don't truly understand you, um, trying their best to do their best for you. Mm-hmm. But is it the same? It's not the is, same. Is it, do you feel the same love? Do you feel the same comfort? Yes, you might feel comfortable, but is it the same comfort? And that's what I was about to say. Maybe it made me too comfortable. So when the pressure started happening, when I went back home, I could. It took me a long time to adjust because yeah. I was so used to just, oh, he's good, yeah, he's good, he, he's good, he's good, he's good. But then I, I, I felt there was no honesty, to be honest, hmm. because they weren't from my coach. I felt like there were no honesty. Hey, you're good, but you have so much to work on. Yeah. So I felt like that because they didn't really understand the culture. And somebody that looked like me to be like, hey, you got to work. You know what I mean? I, I felt I lost a lot, to be honest with you. So that, that is that's the reality of it. <laughs> like your prayer is going to be brutally honest with yes, you. Yes, yes. But sometimes yes. because, you know, all the all of the all the other things around the situation um, and trying to make you comfortable and, and trying to, <laughs> to to don't be somebody that have a negative effect or a negative effect on, on your growth. You know, sometimes people, you know, pat you on the shoulder when you should be getting a slap behind your head. Yeah. So that that also play a major role in in having um, the, all the cultures in 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 elite soccer when it comes to to leadership. But we're gonna dive into this topic a bit deeper. We have um, we have a very intelligent guy that will be speaking on this on this show in Matunda. Um, Quessel, he, he's he's an A licensed coach. He's uh, he has a master in in teaching, and and he also have a a, a bachelor in the art of um, psychology. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have him on the show tonight discussing um, a very some very important um, sharing some very important information that you know if you're listening. And, and you you on this show you want to stick around because um, it's 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 going to be very interesting when we return um, from a short break.
Welcome back to the Coach Kyo Show. You're with Kyo Dan McKinnon here and great award of men. I'll be talking about the lack of diversity um, within soccer. Um, it's, it's, it's ironic that, you know, when we, when we speak about soccer, we don't really speak about um, society and, and societal norms um, from, from a sports perspective, um, but it's, it's very much connected um, mm -hmm. because people play soccer, not animals. You know, human beings play soccer. And, and because human beings play soccer, it's influenced by culture. Um, it's it's influenced by how you were brought up. Um, it's is is influenced by um, society and their norms. That that kind of form that is that forms the ideology, which becomes philosophy. You hear about philosophy in soccer, and and it's all based on or your your idea of the game. Um, this is how you form identity. And through your core values and what you stand for and and all the other things um, and and if we're not careful we we you know oftentimes use theology to conform our our, our behavior and and it's interesting um that um mutonda um share um, his knowledge in, in in this aspect so take a listen uh, to what he has uh, to say on 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 this on this topic when you look at who has control of certain spaces, uh, you know, who has influence and what they create in those places, I don't think you would separate that from how we go about teaching the game uh, and how people go about uh, experiencing the game. So, yeah, it's... Uh... Yeah. We, we try to separate it. How 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 important how important is that? How how do we teach the game if we don't um, if we don't have an idea? How do we really um, teach the players how to play the game with with us having a certain idea of the game without having a certain culture? How could we bring um, our coaching methodology and our training methodology to the game without having a certain culture a certain behavior a certain attitude um and and that that comes from from our culture yeah. that comes from our upbringing that comes from what we believe is, is what we believe are the core values mm -hmm. um in our lives so and and for a very long time it, it affects um which we will dive a bit deep into but it affects um how um, opportunities are given um, to, to 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 black coaches and to Native American coaches, we shouldn't forget them yeah. um, because uh, they they're far removed from from this process. So um, and even to an extent, um, Latinos, you know, they we are far removed um, because uh, based on the culture and based on the expectations and standards, it, it seems like you know coaches that look like you and I, especially you and I, um, don't really, you know, don't really fit um, those criteria. even though you can, like I said, Matanda is, is an A-licensed coach. Uh, we, 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 um, I was able to, to meet him in the course. We spent two years studying and learning um, this game and understanding how to move players to an elite level. Yet yeah, there's there's limit to to no, to no opportunities that uh, for whatever reason um, it's it's no it's neither here or there. But when you look at the bigger picture and you look at uh, what governs um, um, putting uh, coaches like myself and that look that are black in in certain position, uh, there's a there's, there's a different standard. There's a, there's a different level. There's, um, <laughs> it seems like there's one criteria for a, a Caucasian coach and yeah. there's another criteria for a black coach. That, you know, what are your thoughts? No, that, that is the truth. Again, because me and you have these conversations every single day, especially with coach yourself. You've, you've played at the highest level possible for years, for years, even since you were 14, 13, you play at the highest level. And you've been studying the game since you, even when you were younger, so a person with so much knowledge and experience and 
truly wants to develop young athletes and young human beings, it, it, it shouldn't even be a question because you've been around the game all your life. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be hard. It shouldn't be hard for you to be at a top position easily based on even your playing resume and your license. Cause they're always going to say, you need that paper. You need that paper. You need the paper. Good. You have the paper. What is the, what is the problem now? <laughs> what, what is the problem now? What is the problem now? Ironically, it's you know when you, when you when you do an, when you do an A license or you do a B license, um, excuse me, it's you know based on based on what it what it holds, you you are highly competent um, in developing elite players. That's mm -hmm. that's where it comes with. Yeah. So I ask the question today: uh, when you hold a license. Um, what does it mean for a black coach? Yeah, for what you. does it mean for a white coach? Um, because you, 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 you are you are still in the position where um, you, they will say you don't have the experience. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the mere fact that you you given <laughs> let me change my words because they don't, nobody gives you no license. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, At it. that level, you have nah. to earn it. Um, we had some tough instructors who make sure that you earned it because they feel like, and, and I, I appreciated that because you are dealing with young people and you have a responsibility to transform or help to transform. Not you really transforming um, the, the, the athletes' lives, but you, you have to be able, you have to have the skill to make sure that the athlete understand that the answers are in them mm -hmm. uh, without you trying to impose your will in, in rather than you trying to make sure that you give all the answers because the answers that you give is your answers, yeah. you understand? And yeah. the athlete could never be you. So that position is, is very, is critical in terms of not just from a soccer perspective, but a holistic um, perspective because mm -hmm. all of these clubs speaks to player first, the individual first. Every. So then it's it's not just on the field, it's off the field. And you must be in that position or you must be trusted yeah. um, to be yeah. able to do a, a job that speaks to the growth, not of not just of the individual, um, but also the game, okay. because uh, as the game grow, uh, it, it it brings uh, it brings more attention, um, it brings more revenue, it brings more sponsorship, it brings more money. So for a very long time, if you you were let's say second class, third class, or you could keep going on the line with the classes, right? Um, and and you are not seen as somebody who capable of doing that. Um, a license, um, a license to most people don't justify that, you know, because uh, the, there's a certain criteria and a certain expectation that comes, which we will talk about <laughs> a, a bit later, that comes with that position that most people in power who do not look like you and I have used it to marginalize or to keep us in that position. Um, if it's fair or unfair, uh, really, really not my problem. We're here to speak on um, the lack of diversity so that we can liberate um, and, uh, people, coaches that look like us, coaches that don't oftentimes get the opportunity, even though they have the passion, they have the desire, they have the integrity, they have mm -hmm. the character behind what they're doing. Um, it's 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 not to to bow down to to the system, yeah. but it's to to empower yourself. You know, and it's interestingly that you know Matunda had a, a very um, a, a very great outlook when he you know when you talk about people being scared to have this conversation and, and how uncomfortable how uncomfortable it is speaking about these sensitive topics uh, when it's in the public view. You know, it's in the public view. Nothing is hidden. <laughs> it's in the public view. View and the data uh, we will show in 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 this in this in this um in this show. It's clear. It's clear as day. You you can't make this up. 
<laughs> you can't make it up. You know, this is very important to not hide in a bush under a bushel or not hide in your closet and say that okay, if if you speak like this, you know, it's gonna it's gonna get much more difficult. difficult. Well, yeah. let yeah. me bring you up to speed. It's already difficult. <laughs> day one day it's already one. difficult and it's yeah. it's in public view um you, you can't make this up it, it's happening every day but let's listen to what uh, matunda said about this or the, the the upcoming training sessions right because then you realize what your team uh regardless of age struggles with and they can say whatever they want to you you have the game film so you can watch it why do i say that when we look at um, history, there, there are things that people can't dis dispute, right? They can't dispute. Uh, they're there, they're, they're available for public consumption. And so I, I'm no longer at a place where I struggle with uh, trying to figure out whether or not people have feelings of anti-blackness because that's essentially what you're getting to right um and or whether or not people uh you know some people feel a certain su su supremacy right because of the color of their skin who they are they you know where they come from whatever um i know they do what are, what are your what are your thoughts on that <laughs> yeah <laughs> let me, what are your let thoughts me, let me switch <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah. No, you want you want to do that. Remember, we are really late. Yeah, we got man. we got yeah, no script. Yeah, yeah. We got no script. We yeah, we talk on, we talk yeah. truth to yeah. power. We talk soccer. Oh. It's right there for all of us to see. Let me keep running. You know, one thing he said, and it's true, because we just had this conversation. It's a fear thing. It was a point in my life that I was I was scared to be like, if I don't maybe if I don't act this way, things might not happen for me. And that's the truth. Mm -hmm. And that's true. When he said it, it's like, oh, he, you're right, brother. You're right. You're right. But why do I feel scared? It's already there. It's, a, <laughs> it's, it's, it's happening. Why would I be scared? And no, it, it, you're right. You're right. No, it's left me a little speechless. But, but the but the but the numbers don't lie. Or <laughs> the numbers don't lie. How and and again, oh, it's man. it's we we are put in this place because of how we were taught how we were brought up right. you know be careful you know yes people use words like be careful you know uh, the powers that may be can 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 stop you well i'm already on pause <laughs> i'm already on pause how, mo how much more I, how much more <laughs> you know i could just be on more pause for a longer period but it's i'm still on pause um so and it the, the sad part of it is it has happened because we're on pause because yeah. we believe that you know i let me see if i could put this in, in, in context so i go to my friend's house and i stand outside may god help me with this i go i go to my friend's <laughs> house and i stand outside and I already know that the friends don't want me in their house for whatever reason. Something would have happened. They don't want me in their house. Okay. So I stand out there waiting for them to one day tell me I'm going to get in the house. So now the rainfall, the sunshine, the rainfall again, the sunshine. I got sick. Now, I'm struggling to survive. When all I had to do was said, all I had to do was, listen, you don't want me in my house? Let me go to my house. And if your house is big, let me try to start building my house. And if I start building my house now, rather than wasting time standing up by your house waiting for you to invite me in, maybe the same time that I'm using to stand in front of your house, I used to start building my house. My house probably might be bigger than yours. I like Because you might be very comfortable in your house and don't feel the need to build. Because you might have all the things that you need. So if I start building and I 
and I and I'm now seeing that listen, I can actually do this on my own, then I might build a bigger house than you. But guess what? Guess what happens when you build a big house? Now they'll say you, you're doing something illegal, or you're doing something that is not honest because your house is bigger. So what they will try to do? Come and try to tear your house yeah. down. So it's very important mm -hmm. that. Like what that. are you what are you afraid of? You just thought about that? Yeah, I, I, I <laughs> stuff is just come to me just like that. I'm I'm not a philosopher. Like, <laughs> I'm not a philosopher and I never went to D1 school. Okay. So uh, you know things come to my brain <laughs> and it, it comes out because God is boss. It's good. I so love I'm it. trying to show you, right? <laughs> like it's 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 not a, it's it's not hidden. So why are you afraid to talk about it? Why are you afraid to address it? You know, because most people address it with hostility. They address yeah. it with, okay. with fear. They address it with anger. They address it with all of these things that they are truly unnecessary. You're not invited in a house. Go start building your own house. You understand? But don't be afraid to talk about it because when you talk about it, it's, it's, more, it's more to empower. You understand? I will I will dive deep into that a bit more, but I want to take a break so we could we could educate um, our listeners out there about about soccer and and about um, the tactical aspect of the game um, for young viewers who might not understand a few things based on where they're playing. Um, this is an opportunity for you to listen, um, and you could go listen it over again. <laughs> This one situation here can drive your mind to more situations that you can create using the principles of the game, using the principles of the game. This is create space, maintaining space, exploiting space. Am I able to read how the defenders are set up, how they're set up? Am I able to get into those triangles where it creates better supporting positions? Am I able to penetrate through, over or around? Am I playing between the lines? Are the passes effective to break the lines? Am I only playing in front of the opposition? Am I stretching them? Or am I allowing them to stay compact and stay organized? You, could, you can come up with more ideas so that you enhance your independent thinking so that you can better make decisions on the field. Welcome back to the Coach Kyle Show. You with Kyle Day. And alongside me, the great Awal Ahmed. I hope that was was helpful. Um, Thank you. We will try to bring as much as possible um, to you, and and hopefully it can bring some amount to uh, help um, in terms of how you approach the game, how you approach your practices. But nevertheless, we back on this this topic of lack of diversity. Um, it, it it's truly amazing that you know. This great disparities between um, black coaches, white coaches, Latino coaches, and don't forget Native American coaches, because like I said, there seems to there seems to be a loss. There seem to be a lost people when it relates to you know just not just soccer but yeah, sports in general. Yeah. Um, you you really don't hear a lot about them, but they were the people that were here. We should we should feel a bit uncomfortable because we took the we we took the we took the people place too. Um, we know, we know history, about. right? Yeah. So, uh, but I, I you know I apologize because we you know our people wasn't really responsible. We were right. they, we were brought here for that. Um, so listen, it's it's important to understand this, and it's it's not a difficult conversation. It's not because it's there. You understand? Right. Difficult conversations should be when there's not a clear picture. There's not a clear understanding. Um, the, uh, the, 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 there's not a clear definition of what is happening. When something is right in front of your face, how you could say it's a difficult conversation? That should be the easiest conversation because it's already out there. If something is hidden... Then it might be a difficult conversation because you might not want nobody to know. You might not want to 
you might not want to face it. You might not want to look at it because it might be embarrassing. It might be, you know, it might not be what you represent. It might not be what you really want to do. So maybe you want to keep that hidden. Okay. But when something is not hidden, um, how is it? How is it a difficult conversation? Who who you believe okay. makes it a difficult conversation? If we could speak the truth here, I think who it, makes it a difficult conversation in your from your perspective? I think I think us. I think us. I think we make it a difficult conversation. Because, Elaborate. Yeah, because I believe again, it's it's there. We believe. I feel like again, speaking for just us, for me, me in general. Yeah, I believe that. We, it's a fear. I believe it's fear. To be mm -hmm. honest with you, I believe it's fear. It's like if I speak on this, I might not get this. But I love the story you just said. Like, why am I scared? Why am I scared when I can go do my own? I'm already doing it. Yeah. Why don't I just do my own? But it's fear. It's fear that I might Mm -hmm. Get the opportunity. <laughs> I know. You still, know, you still know. long enough. You're, yeah, yeah. You're, you're 45. Yeah. You're, you're 50. You're saying, I might get a house. I'm, 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 I might get. Yeah, let me just yeah. let me just stick around here. a little bit longer. Yeah. How 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 crazy <sighs> is fear though? That fear paralyzes us. It's you know fear actually makes us stop. Because to me, there's two different types of fear. I don't okay. use, I don't even use fear when it comes to that. I use people are scared. Okay. Because when when I when they talk about fear, God talk about fear, mm -hmm. and God use fear as reverence, reverence to His authority because He's boss. Yeah. You know, He controls all things. Mm -hmm. He's ever present. Um, he's everywhere. He He controls every single thing. Talking to talking to one of our players uh, a few hours ago. And they were like, you know, I, I didn't have no, I didn't have no money in my account. I didn't have no money in my account, and I just had seven dollars in my pocket. And you know, and, and we talk about this how it's important to give what you have. You know, mm -hmm. to give what you have is a representation of leadership. Is about service. Yes. It's about not giving when you're comfortable giving. It's about giving when it's uncomfortable. And, and it, it's the same way it relates to uh, this, when you embody this attitude of leadership and coaching, which we all possess. It's it's not for a group of people. Okay. This is why it, it's so troubling because it's not for a group of people, it's for all of us. It's, it's embedded in all of us. Uh, and this is an African-American uh, player. And I was like, listen, I remember the importance of giving and, and the player saw somebody who was struggling. And, and needed it more. And, and, and the player decided, listen, I'm going to take this entire $7 and give it to that person. And, and they called me with excitement because the next day they found $20. <laughs> they found $20. He got bored of got he got yeah, double. Yeah. The player got double plus on, on top of it. Yeah. And it just, it just remind me how important it is that, that if we all give, of ourselves because we we're given a gift and that gift should not be stifled uh, by no one by by no group of people who believe um, they are all things and, and all power when there's only one power who controls everything and he will show his power to those who believe he don't and in that in that simple story to most people it shows the important when you are willing to give all that you have and and we're talking about this because it's important that you don't stifle your voice because of the color of your skin. That you don't make yourself inferior. You don't make yourself lowly because of somebody's perception of you. Uh, it, it clearly shows that if you are willing to serve, if you're willing to give all that you have, there's a return for you. And it and the return don't come from no man. That played in. That play wasn't, it's like God drop it right here and say, pick yeah, it up. Yeah, you, you see, yeah. it, it wasn't given by someone. Like the story of the man with the five talents and the man with the two and the three and the one. And the one said, boy, I can hold on to what I have because this makes me powerful. You understand? And this, and this is what you see a lot with 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 this with this culture, with this with this environment. If we be fair, um, with with organization are, are predominantly uh, white. Um, coaches and, and white directors and white technical directors where they hold on to this thing and they say, listen, nobody will come and take it from me. 
But then we know the story, the one with five, so I'm going to give everything. And that sounds like us sometimes. We give everything. We show up five o'clock in the morning. We oh, we, yeah. we, we, oh, we leave um, sometimes one o'clock in the morning. Sometimes we're here all day. Sometimes you and I in the office and we're working and we're trying to figure out ways how to get the players better. We, we're looking at videos. We're, we're giving them clips. We're, we're, we're making sure that they understand um, the importance of of doing reflections and and you know and pushing themselves beyond the limits. We do all these things. You understand? We we are truly giving of ourselves, and it's 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 not respected. We we understand that. We understand that. But that, that's why I wanted you to understand that. Listen, the one who gave all that he had, the one who decided that he's going to hold on and make sure that nobody else get it, it was taken away from him. And it was given to the person who was willing to serve. So, so don't you know? Don't feel um, discouraged. And, and I want to, I want to go back to this this point of people saying that you need to be very careful, because you hear it a lot of times. I had one academy director, one name, his name. Um, but if you listen to the show, you understand. He says, you know, if you if you object uh, to something that you're not comfortable about, um, that means. Um, your core values are not important. Your non-negotiables, even though they talk about having non-negotiables because that makes you a real person. You you just can't follow, 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 follow. Um, this is not coming to America when the person say, jump like, bark like a dog, roof, 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 jump like a this, jump, jump, jump. You know, they make all these, they make all these statements. But if you object to something that makes them uncomfortable, yes. then they make you feel like you you are you are a cancer you're or you are a problem. Yeah. Um, and and sorry, I'm not using cancer because you know it, it's a serious thing. So many people are suffering. Apologies there um, with with that. But they make you feel like you're scorned, and they start using words like you don't know how to communicate. Mm -hmm. um, they start using words like oh you don't know you're not a team player. You don't work um, well with others. You don't work well with <laughs> yeah. others. They they, yeah. they try to find yeah. ways and 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 I and I ask the question. Um, you say all of that. Tell me what I've done wrong. And couldn't and couldn't couldn't get to that level. All all was said was well you know you you haven't done nothing wrong but. What he basically was saying to me, uh, the culture that runs this thing don't accept you having a voice. That's all. That's all that meant to me. Okay. okay. Like the culture, uh, the people in power, which is mostly um, white dominance, okay. you know, won't allow you uh, to have to 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 be objective. Won't uh, won't allow you to share your perspective. Again, you, you clearly. You clearly realize I didn't use the word opinions because I really don't care about opinions. Um, opinions is self-service and it's self-satisfied. You know, have facts, um, be real, be true about you know what you what you feel, what you're going through. Regardless if it's good, bad, or indifferent, uh, stick to that. Be intentional about it too. Like I always say, whatever you do, be intentional about it because at the end of the day, you will have to make a choice to fix it. But it, it's very important that, that coaches um, who, who are listening to this program that are in the same predicament or, or feel like, you know, you, you, you don't have to be a human being because a human being has the ability to speak. A human being has the ability to go after, uh, to pursue um, their purpose to pursue their happiness to pursue what what empowers them and and if you have to to, to put that aside because you're scared I, I want you to to listen um, to what Mutanda had to say about this there are we have to be clear about what we talk about when we even use terms like diversity and representation inclusion these sorts of things because essentially, you know, what does it mean in application? Does it mean that the actual uh, paradigm has shifted that, that in terms of giving people opportunity within the game, within society to, to advance, to have, uh, uh, you know, to have a chance to actually just live their lives? Um, or is it actually just the system uh, granting certain concessions, right? Oh, I'm going to give you, let's say, just again, we're talking about football, but we can expand to larger forces in society. Um, but if, if you look at football, the advancement of uh, people of color, especially on the men's side, to 
certain positions within the game or uh, in within media, those are that's still part of the that doesn't fundamentally change necessarily the the larger system of white dominance in the sport in in this you know in this locale in this colony uh, or even globally, right? It's just a it's it's a part of the same process you could say. Um, and unpacking that, yeah, makes people uncomfortable because what they don't want to tackle is the original process, the larger process, which is the colonization, right? Um, and the the, um, the the white settler process, you know? Wow. You see, you see what I'm talking about? So, <laughs> let, let me, I, I want us to understand because, uh, you know, this guy, uh, I think we should, and the most coaches, most um, young people in sport, out of sport, whatever you're doing, um, follow that guy. You know, he's on Twitter, he's on Facebook. Um, he has a program, the Rising, um, the Rising Star, um, deals with a lot of um, young people, underprivileged young people. A guy with, you uh, know, with with a high character. Um, yeah. And I could say that without fear uh, because um, he and I would have had, you know, numerous conversations and it's, it's, it's always, it's always interesting um, his perspective and, and you, you feel a sense of honesty. It feels like this is his purpose. And it's so important to understand that um, because we are, we are so fighting to be included. We are fighting so hard to be included. And and be included in what? <laughs> be included in what? Is is it system systematic that we are given a certain we given positions and, and suddenly we feel like there's there's changing changes? Are there really changes? When you look at colonialization and, and what it has done, how it has transformed um a whole culture, how it has transformed the minds, um, it's, it's not an easy thing to rebuild. Because if you, <laughs> if you drop who you are to become something that you're not, then you actually live in a lie. Because that is not who you are. Okay. So when you look at colonialization and how it imposes its will on a people, now, if you don't understand what that is, now I'm from Guyana originally, a wall is from Ghana. It's really no different because all the Ghanaians, the Nigerians, that's who end up in the Caribbean. <laughs> so really it's just a plane and a boat between, you know, between us. We're, we're, the, we're the same people, you understand? But, you know, people, if people don't know how it works, well, there's there's a kingdom, and then this kingdom sends a governor, and this governor imposes what the king requires within the country. So one person in a country determines how a hundred and something, seven hundred and something thousand people live. One person, one person come to that country. So you're ruled by a kingdom. And then this kingdom send one person. And this one person makes the laws because the laws are coming from the kingdom. So they impose it. They, they pretty much implement it. And they say to 700 or 800,000 people, for some countries, probably 4 million, whatever, that this is how you live. This is what you do. Regardless of what you think you are or what you believe you are, this is how you will operate. This is how you will speak. This is how you will dress. That's not that's not your original culture. Yeah, not at all. That is at not all. who you are. But because they are in charge, they dictate how you operate. So when we that's why Matondo said. What is inclusion? What is diversity? What is what does that really mean? 
Does that mean that you have to change? <clears throat> I don't know what I don't know what we're gonna change because <laughs> we already mentally um, not in a good place at all, at all. because of colonialization and what and the ideology that was given to us and and one of those ideology that was given to us as a people as black people is leadership it's natural it's a natural endowment um this is history go read it for yourself um, it's there it's there within the greek within the, in the greek library that the romans adopt and 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 bring it to our people where we're struggling and 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 they, they place this 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 ideology on you that you are less uh, because you didn't look a certain way, and 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 then it moved it moved to being very charismatic. This is why you see the smiling and the shaking of the hands and uh, a very calm speech, but behind the scenes they're not the same. But it's it's a practice, it's a skill, um, and 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 if you don't do that, because guess what, you know. When you, when you see a Kenyan running in the Olympics, you you know there's a Kenyan. Like, boy, like you be running all day in the <laughs> Like, you you know because it's aggressive, it's speed, it's it's pace, it's it's let's get the job done. You know, we here for the truth. Yeah. We're not here to to to, 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 to joke and, and, and laugh. We we here. We're all here to get the job done, and and it's a learn it's a learn behavior too. Yeah. You, you just can't say, well, anybody could be a leader. Anybody can be a leader, but you have to develop. You have to develop the character. You have to develop um, the integrity. You have to develop the the knowledge. You have to develop the ability um, to to really empower people, to reduce yourself, and make people. Um, more of important to uh, remove your pride. It, it's so much things in becoming a leader. But going back to what I just said, um, that has have a glaring effect on how we are treated, because you know ideas form, um, ideas form your 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 philosophy. You know, it, it forms um, this perception, and then now it becomes a concept. And, and then if you say something over and over, like they say presupposition, if you keep saying something over and over and you're behaving something over and over, some people start believing it's, it's the truth. And if more people believe that is the truth, then everybody say, well, this is the way. Even though it could be wrong because everybody's doing it, it becomes true. And likewise, it's the same way where we were taught that you are not fit to be a leader. Some people say, well, that is not true. Yes, it is. Go read. Yeah, it is. That's what you should yeah. do. Go yeah, read. Because the data will show that we are not lying. The data will show that it it is facts that this leadership, this definition of leadership was based on a natural endowment. And to and, and one of the things God said that mm -hmm. we were all created, all right. You must only have dominion over animals, right? Okay. That's the only thing you must have dominion over. You must only have dominion over animals. Do you understand why they reduce you and I to animals? It's my... So what type of chant they make? My, my monkey chance. So what a monkey is a human being? No. He's, oh. yeah. So okay. For, okay. To, okay. To, to make me inferior, okay. you must reduce me to less than a human. Okay. Because that's the only thing you should have dominion over. Okay. You must have dominion over animals, fish in the seas, birds in the air, you know, and, and again, these are religious people that quote these things that don't look like us. You understand? So you must have dominion over this. So then how do you feel is is is, is it's ironic that they use monkey chants? You know, I went to different countries and I never know it's monkey chants. <laughs> I was I I was I was I was a dead club. <laughs> I, I was I was like, yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I, and then I realized when I started oh, seeing man. it happening in Europe, okay. I was like, wow, boy, they, they, they were really calling me a monkey. Oh, my what? God. 
I didn't even realize because it's coming from a country like Guyana with six different races. Yeah. I didn't grow up with that. I got I got family with <laughs> in yeah, all different seriously, races. Seriously. I've never really experienced it to that level, you know. So experiencing it for the first time, you know, I couldn't believe it, you know. And I had a next experience. I went into a store. I think I mentioned it before. I went into a store. And, and a little child who was like three years old said, ask the father, what is black guy doing in here? <laughs> three year old. Three year old. He looked like three. He probably was just like tall by my, close <laughs> to my hips or below. Now is that trying to scold him. Okay. He okay, brought him out the line and be like, uh, everybody's, everybody have access to this place. Like he's three years old. What, oh where is he learning that God. from? <laughs> he said, what is this black guy doing in here? That was, uh, that was the eye opener for me. Like people really have this, uh, this sense and we're talking about why there's a lack of diversity mm -hmm. in here because we have to show like Matondo said we have to show the process we have to show the history of things yeah. because if we don't we're going to be drawn into this hate bit yeah yeah we're going to draw into this angle you're going to we're going to be drawn into this yeah. this this delusion of we want to be we want to be included we want to we want to we we, we want to see we want to see your, what changes do you really want to see for anything to change a mindset must change, change yes and yes. and it must start with who <laughs> it must start with you you <laughs> it must start with me and you you are wasting your time and giving all your energies um, waiting for that change when this this is colonialization this is history and 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 not and don't blame not everybody comes in um that that are white um or of different culture because there's other culture that treat other culture in a certain way um but in soccer we we see this dominance right and not everybody that like i've dealt with with with, uh, with people in soccer that you know show me um, the ropes show me the way to do things so this is not this is not for everybody this is not for this don't go to everybody but it exists <laughs> it exists and if it exists the question uh, must be asked how do you deal with it and what is inclusion what is diversity um what is that really you know cuz colonialization have already defined you know who we are and who they are so what what do you what, what do you say to that i believe i believe diversity from the way the way they put it i believe diversity is or inclusion is we we have to make it look it's the words that i'm using we yeah. have to make it look a certain way so we can't say well we gotta put in at least one or two in there we gotta mm -hmm. put and then you hear it because this even in workplaces Prior to this, you hear it. Um, be it's got to be one. It's got to be one or two in this position. It got to be one or two. Why is it one or two? One or two. One or two. When the numbers, when the numbers say clearly, the rest is 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 one culture, is one certain people. Why is it one or two? And I say, okay, they're gonna say because questions are gonna be asked answered. When people fill applications, they're gonna be like, okay, how many people look like me in this company? Yeah, and you clearly see it's one or two in the number of six hundred. Yeah, when I have the when I have even a higher degree, if we're talking about merit, mm -hmm. and I have even a higher degree than the person that's even hiring me, you, have, you don't have experience. <laughs> you haven't done it long enough. <laughs> so if oh, I'm not, oh, no, so if no. I am qualified to do it. Okay. Right? Yeah. Somebody's unqualified to do it, then. There is no, they have more experience because they understand. All right, fair enough. They've done it longer. Okay. But I'm qualified to do it, right? Now, when I don't have the qualification to do it, right? Yeah. And this person have not done it long enough, then I don't have the qualification. Even though if I'm playing for years and years and years and having the experience of playing at the highest level, of seeing coaches work at the highest level, and I embrace that, but again, don't say that because you play, you can coach. Nobody's saying that. Listen, nobody's saying that. But we've seen also players who have played at a high level go into jobs and have never had an experience of coaching. So when we say that, 
it oftentimes only relate to a black coach. That's a fact. That's a fact. Because we've seen time and time again all over this world that if a player would have played at a high level, yeah. that it, that white, yeah. Yeah. they are given an opportunity to coach That's a fact. That's a fact. because because there's there's a definition there that says what leadership looks like. It has nothing to do with meritocracy. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with qualifications. It has to do with a systemic mindset and a definition that already disbar you and I from holding a position that could change a world. Forget soccer teams. <laughs> Forget that. This is bigger than soccer. This is business. This is this is everything. So people believe that, like I said, when we talk on this show about soccer, we speak to life. Yes. Because soccer is life. And soccer allow a lot of young people to find their own identity. They 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 find a belief system and they find trust. Um they they find humility, they find courage, they find bravery. These these are all components of life. So we're not going to just reduce it to soccer because somebody be like, yeah, yeah, shut up and just talk about soccer. <laughs> okay. That's okay too. But guess what? It's going to happen to you in business too. It's going to happen to you in, in school. It's going to happen to you everywhere you go because you fail to understand that you want to be included in something that wasn't built for you. Mm -hmm. So like Matunda said, what is that? Is it because there's opportunity given in in certain areas and certain and certain places? But we have we have we have this part too because um, there's a lot more that um, he spoke about that you would want to hear. Um, he, if you are a young coach, if you are part of the minority within this environment, it, it's something that you want to listen to because it's it's, it's empowering, you know. And but. Like we said, we don't just want to speak and sound like we're just being opinionated, um, but we have facts. And we, we want to be able you know, to share those facts with you. And we also want you to, to, to hear um, some articles that we were able to pick up from very prominent players who would have, you know, wear, wear this color um, in, in, this, in, in this local here. Who have wear this color and, and wore this color and done um, so many great things. So many great things. Yeah, they are facing the same thing, hey. and they had a they had a great perception <laughs> of what it was until it, it actually happened. So, well, you know, you you have the facts and the you data know, there. So share it, share it with me. our listeners okay. so that they can they can understand. So we like to we like to call it this segment for myself. Numbers don't lie. <laughs> numbers, so, don't numbers, lie. numbers don't lie. <laughs> So of the uh, 77 MLS assistant coaches, 14 are black, which it, which makes it 18 percent. Uh, three are Latino, 3.9 percent. And when we talk about women in the game, it's zero. So we're it's not zero. even yeah, that's even okay. that's even not included. So this is recently this recently is 2020 21 numbers. So we talk about head coaches too, right? This that was the assistant. That's that's assistant. Head coaches, right? In the whole MLS, there's only two, right? There's only two. I make sure you mention that one. He's he's <laughs> the temporary. Okay. He's the take off. Okay. Yeah. So the yeah. so the head coaching position, right? Robin uh, Frazier for the Colorado Rapids, right? He's he's been there for some number of years, and Wilfred Nancy, who's the intern. For Montreal system, Montreal FC, who took over when Henri left due to due to family reasons. So the only the only head coaches in MLS is is pretty much one, and one is intern. So next year he might not even be there, to be honest. Yeah, and we already no know intern, he's not going to be no there. Work. He's 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 not going to be better win every yeah, game. He's, yeah, he's he's not going to be there. He's not going to be there. So <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> we got a lot. We got a lot. So. It's a it's a big player that everybody knows, and I know you guys heard it because he played for LA Galaxy for a number of years. He won, he played for the World Cup, he won a title with LA Galaxy, uh Edson Buttle, right? Um, numerous championships, 38 years now. So one thing, and I'm quoting him, 
you can this article, and I'm quoting him from Goal Magazine. He says he was trained how to play the game of soccer, but didn't know how to play the game once it came to the industry. Not knowing how to shake the right hands and how to get in touch with the right people, which emails to pay attention once he retired in 2015. Him trying to look for an MLS career. Those little details in the corporate world outside soccer, I maybe didn't pay attention or just focus on because I worked with my dad in the MLS. Already during his playing days, Buttle says, and this is something that I think Coach Kyle definitely talked about, he had to be accustomed to being the only black person in the room. Sometimes he said it stifled his personality in the locker room and even his creativity on the pitch, being the only black player on his team. I can't maximize my potential if I'm trying to act like someone else, he said, that hinders who I am on the field. You need a coach that kind of looks like you to inspire you. I use rude guilt as an example. He played at my position. He looked just like me. He was a black guy. I had him on my wall and inspired me to become that type of player every day. Hmm. <laughs> That's what I played. I played here, right? <laughs> okay. It's in public view, yeah, oh right? My, it's yeah. there for everybody to go and see. Oh you, 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 we're not making this up at all. It's at there. all. At all. At all. It's another number it's from when we talk about Wilfred Nancy, the coach that just came in from the uh, from Montreal FC, right? Just talking about a little bit about his background. Police surgeon had coached at the academy since 2011. During his time, he coached the U18, the U21, the U16, the U14s, the U15s. So he did all that academy. He did all the academy until he finally got pushed up to the uh, first team in 2016, being as assistant to his prior becoming a uh, the head intern for uh, what's the name Montreal uh, CF. So also he talked about. Let me get to this article. You can go ahead, Kyle, to yeah. find this last one. And and, and it just it just is clear as day because again. We we're doing this because, like I said, we don't want to have opinions. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, these articles are live experience that uh, they are sharing um, um, because it must be said. You must know, like all other coaches and, and young players and aspiring to to be at that level, um, it's important to you to understand this um, because. Earlier, we talk about this fear factor, and yeah. not fear, being afraid, scared. being scared. 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 Sorry, being scared, and believing that you know you have to be charismatic and 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 you have to be able to shake hands and smile, even though you're lying, um, <laughs> even though you, you shake the person on yeah. and you smile and then walk off and be like, player can't even play nothing, um, but they pay the bills. You know, if you if that. If that is is what you want to represent, if that is what you want to be like, um, to be in that position, fair enough. Um, fair enough. Um, this is why we're in the position we're in today. Yes. <laughs> That's a fact. That's a fact. So <laughs> let me finish off with John Arnold. He's a CONCACAF correspondent, and he wrote an article from 2019. Another, he wrote another article in 2020. Um, he talked about Robin Frazier, which is the Colorado uh, Rapids coach. He said many African-American coaches feel pressure not only to get results, but to succeed so their peers can get opportunities. What needs to change? So he said that when black coaches are given opportunities, even if it's an assistant or a division one assistant, because we get most assistant jobs. We don't get head coaches. We get assistant. Yeah. Or assistant of assistant. Okay. <laughs> so he said that when we get these jobs, we, there's so much pressure. I think as coaches, we also put a lot of pressure on ourselves. And these jobs come with a lot of pressure. But as a black coach, there's so much more pressure on our shoulders because if we don't succeed, that might be a window closed for the next black potential coach. Should be told. Should be told. Quote for quote. Quote for quote. We got we got we got a lot Yo. more quotes, but we, we're not gonna we're not gonna give you everything tonight. Like I said, we got part two. And if we go to the NWSL <laughs> in the history <laughs> of their game, they have never seen a black coach. <laughs> not even one. Not even, even one, one black so, head coach. Don't even, and yeah. there's so much dominant black players yeah. um, with, within the league. Um, and there's so, so much, much. And they're, they're good players all across the board. But just look at that. Like, um, again, 
Yo, you know, but I see this to be honest, and 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 bringing this show, bringing all the curtains on this show, um, it's important not to not to be drawn into drawn into the head bait. You know, it's like two different houses, and one house <laughs> believe in one thing, and one house believe in the other. You must not hate the other house because they don't share your belief. You must not allow the other house to affect your belief system mm -hmm. and, and what you stand for. I believe it's important that just like just like just like us and what we preach here at KMSA, um, we need to be able to liberate ourselves. We need to focus on who we are, um, not necessarily want to be included. Why do we need to be included? What about standing out? Exactly. Yeah, what about that? We're fighting to be included in what? Something, you want to be included in somebody else that is not yours? You want to be, if 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 you are there and, and you're invited, fantastic. You're invited and you're respected um, by your values, um, by what you stand for, um, by the respect for yourself. Respect for organization, respect for leadership, um, not because you 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 want to be included. Yeah. Like you're very important. You're a very important being. This is why you're unique. There's nobody like you. You you cannot find a next person with your DNA. Don't forget that. That means that you are an original. What you have, nobody else has. And everything that you have, somebody wants it. You are powerful beyond measure. So in, in rather than trying to be included, think about standing out. Because just like, just like trends, you can create your own trends to the point where there's followers. Then followers become owners. You understand? So... This is very important that we don't be drawn into, into quarrels and, and, and form, fall into the head bait and to, <laughs> and to use your energies to wonder why you can't get in. You know? Focus your energies on standing out. And when those relationships happen, happens, those relationships should be authentic. Yeah, genuine. That's what and those relationships should be genuine. Yeah. Not like the coach who feels like he's under enormous pressure. Every coach at the elite level yeah. is under pressure. White, brown, blue, mm -hmm. yellow. Because everybody can lose their job. Yeah, yeah, seriously. But it sounds like he's under different pressure. Yeah. <laughs> it's like there's, there's no opportunity. There's no there's no place. This might be a lot. Even losing one game. I'm telling you. Much less losing back to back. <laughs> That's what that that's what the that article sounds like. Like, like, yeah. like boy, <laughs> if I lose one game, um, we should start packing because we might be out of here soon. Or let me call my agent. Is there anything else out there? It's like that, it's, it's not like so that like, type of yeah, pressure. Dude, so, and and I don't oh it's a different God. pressure to the point where he's thinking about this is for somebody else. Mm. So I will caution you, I will say. What you're doing is to liberate yourself, is to empower yourself, it's to is to have an impact on the people you come in contact with. And and we must we must not have this, we must not be we must not be scared. Yeah, scared. You understand? Yeah, man. You have enormous power, <laughs> which nobody controls that but you. Um, through your choices, through what you stand for, through your character, what you believe in. And there will be doors that will shut because you have a perspective. But God is greater. Always. Be, be sure to know that God is greater, you know. And if you, and if you don't understand that, you know, the very sword that was, was supposed to be used to kill the little boy, David, the very sword, yeah. Was used to cut the lion, the, the Goliath neck off clean. 
you know so the last shall be the first and the first shall be the last how patient are you I, I, I encourage you I encourage you not to want to be included don't fight for inclusion you know fight to stand up and when when that time comes where relationships when relationships come together when relationships happen then it's genuine it's it's authentic it's a it's a respect and then you become more powerful because two people are walking with the same vision but if you go in there and you you know you have to put away all your values even though they will tell you, you know, yeah, yeah. hold true to your values, yeah, yeah, hold true yeah, yeah. to what you, your non-negotiables, and all of these things. The minute, the minute you object to yeah, to what is happening, there's there's no conversation. At all. It's about our way or the highway. You understand? That means byway. It's it's no inclusion anymore. There's no respect for what I stand for anymore. It's about this is how we do it. This is in our environment with no respect for your culture, with no respect for your, your family upbringing, with no respect for your values. It's keep it moving. Mm. Even though you might be valuable in, in the skill set of what is expected, if you don't speak and you don't operate, they have a right to put you out of their house because it's their house. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you mad? <laughs> You know why? Why? Why are we mad? Because we want inclusion. <laughs> we shouldn't be mad. It's not your house. It's not. It's not. Go it's build not. your own house. You're right. You're right. And in right. Guyana, they say one one dirty build dam. <laughs> what, <laughs> what, what other people ain't gonna understand, right? What, what that mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, listen, you want to build a house? Why go buy ten blocks? Okay. Yeah. You know, first, before you buy the blocks, go dig a hole and make sure the foundation is set. Okay. Build the foundation, and then you work, and you go buy, you go buy a block, and you put it up. Before you know it, you you, you have a you're looking at it, you're like what? I I, I get a I, I get a structure already, and then you keep working, and you end up with windows. You keep working, you can end up with with a roof. You keep working up with a door, and then you close your door, and people can't come in unless you invite them. <laughs> So guys, <laughs> you're right. You have to, yeah, you know, build your build, own house. Yeah, yeah. Don't be mad. Yeah. Don't be drawn into the head base. Don't be mad. Don't be surprised. <laughs> Don't waste your time trying. Um, you know, you have to move away from that. You, 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 it's 2021. You have to think different. You know, you you all you also have to respect that a man can only change when he chooses to change. Exactly. You understand? Nothing on earth you can do nothing let me say it absolutely <laughs> nothing you can do to change someone it's a personal choice what you can do is change you stand change the way you think change the way you carry yourself any closing words you know for me like i said read the shirt <laughs> dare to believe, man. You gotta dare to believe. You're right. You're right. We have to believe. And it's like I said, it's just again like listening to Matumbo and just thinking about certain things that we always talk about. It's 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 we're scared. We're scared because it's been embedded in us for so many generations, so many years. We're scared, but you have to be there. You have to dare to believe because your greatness, like we said, greatness is within. It's in you. God made everybody special. Is again, we have to find our purpose. This is what we do to all these athletes. We 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 help them through their process of finding their purpose, right? Yeah. Regardless if it's football or not. Yeah, yeah, it's bigger. It's so bigger. yeah, um, feel free um, to reach out to us. On um, you can see above our head, our our, our website, our our numbers, uh, our number. Use it and see on the screen our Instagram at Coach Kayo. And at God's Willing 1423, if you want us to speak about a specific topic, uh, yep. then feel free to reach out. Remember, excuse me, we're we're millionaires, right? There's no script. We're not playing by no letter. You know, we're not playing by no law of 
what what this what this show is you know some people just need just need the realness some people just need um and you know us to just speak from our hearts because there's a genuine genuineness with that you know right. never trust scripted things um because it's not a true representation they said they said that the the message of the author always the heart of the author okay. always follows his message you know what i'm saying so listen somebody could say something it don't necessarily mean that's what they believe and if you follow something and that is not the truth then you'll be left in the lie while the person move on with their truth so it's very important that we keep this show real very important that we be our authentic self even if we don't cross the t's dot the i's and, nah, and, and, and put the full one. stops <laughs> and all those things okay all right we're still alive we can still be there and by god's grace we'll still be alive tomorrow but nevertheless we thank you for you know being on the show with us um thank you for sharing uh, feel free to subscribe um to our channel yes. on on youtube yes, um, yes, the coach yes. kayo show subscribe and so that you can continue <clears throat> to get um more content that we have um young players looking for um, more knowledge more um soccer school um to improve your game um looking for more individual um and work so that you can elevate yourself yeah. before you can be elevated in a team you know feel free to reach out we we want to serve we want to give we pride ourselves on quality and service exactly. because we believe if we give we will receive so enjoy the rest of your week stay blessed stay safe um and and from the KMSA family we love you and we pray that God will bless each and every person and if your hearts need changing that he can do that too stay safe this is the coach Kyle show a podcast of two billionaires not afraid to discuss the real details of all things soccer a wide variety of episodes are already available chock full of incredible insight from two qualified experienced coaches here are some previews of eye opening quotes Lots of players think they need to drive an hour or two hours to get good training. Because community clubs do not feel, most of them, if not all of them, don't feel the responsibility to provide every child the best opportunity. This is for players to have fun, so why not name it Rec? An elite league shouldn't be based on teams. It should be based on the coaching. There's no integrity in the game. It's all about business. It's it. That's all it is. There's nothing about soccer first. Everything is about giving the athletes an experience. We hope you are available to tune in. New episodes every Monday night.